Hi, this is Chuck Martin with the AI Summit in New York City. I'm happy to say I have with me here Pablo Damasceno, Principal Data Scientist for Johnson & Johnson. Welcome. That's right, thank you. Thank you, so you to be here. So you just finished a, a program. Tell me what you talked about. Uh, so the talk I was giving today was a lot about using Gen AI, which is this uh, thing that everyone is excited about. Uh, to find ways of tackling uh, biases in our imaging system. So at J&J, we do a lot of work trying to help uh, bring the right drug to the right patient and making sure that that drug is working across different countries, different types of patients. And that also uh, means making sure that our algorithms that are built in, in, those, uh, in those clinical trials, that they don't have biases on themselves. So we've been using a lot of Gen AI models to try to remove some of those biases that can be in the imaging or can be uh, during the entire process of the clinical trial. So what's an example of a bias? Uh, a very interesting one that I've found in a work I've done uh, in my previous uh, job was if you take a bunch of chest x-rays and you're trying to detect does this person has uh, a high probability of chance of dying, for instance, during the COVID. So that's a work we've done during COVID of taking a chest x-ray and asking, is there a high probability that this person is going to need a ventilator? Is that this person is going to need uh, more care than they are getting? and then finding out that the model is actually looking at does this person have a pacemaker. It's not the pacemaker that makes you have a high probability of death, it's just that the model knows that there is a correlation between pacemaker and death. So the model is looking at correlations and not causations. So you've been doing this for a while? Uh, yeah, about six or seven years in the AI space. So how have you, how have you seen it evolve over that time? Uh, it's the AI hype cycle where we see things come and go and things are interesting. Gen AI is a good example of it. There are lots of interesting things you can do with it. There's a lot of exciting new space for you to, to make use of the technology, but also a lot of things to be careful of and, and, and uh, you know, not, not just take things for granted. So you really have to do some of the work to see what works and what doesn't work. So yep. you're, you're an AI, so you, you've known about a lot of these AI technologies besides yeah, Gen AI, sure. obviously. Where do you see the role of it in healthcare going forward? Because you've got massive privacy issues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we really think that this is uh, the future. So one of the problems in healthcare in general is doctors are overloaded. There is even uh, a lot of biases on the way that doctors are giving uh, prescriptions or doctors are giving you a, a, a diagnosis for a disease, for instance. And in particular, at Johnson & Johnson, we work a lot with uh, rare diseases. And those are cases where doctors are not really looking for this disease, and a lot of time they have misdiagnosis. So this is a case where we go to FDA, uh, the European agencies, and they actually want to work with us because they know that doctors might be misdiagnosing a lot more than our AI systems are. So they are really excited about bringing those systems into the healthcare, to bring them into the clinical trials. And I think if we can reduce those biases, it will be a no-brainer to have those uh, uh, AI models inserted into the healthcare. And, and are, the, are, are the doctors open to this? Do they like it? Uh, I think there is a, 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 some are taken aback of Am I going to lose my job? What's happening? And as soon as they understand how the model works or where the model, if the model can actually help you and say, I think this person has pulmonary hypertension because here are the signs, they can make a much more informed decision. But they can also see, oh, here's a case where the AI is wrong because the place where they marked was just a, a correlation and not a causation. So humans working with AI are going to be the ones replacing the humans, not working with AI. So, so is that a process of, of doctors learning that that's the way it should be? I think it's a, it's a process of them adapting and getting more familiar with the technology. It, it's just happening, right? It's the same way that you use Google and whether Google has AI in the background or not, you don't actually quite care. And the doctors will be the same way. When they take a scan, an x-ray scan of your chest is already going to come annotated for you say, here's what the AI thinks happens because of this and that. You can make what you want with this decision. You can read it or not. So, so in healthcare, is that how you see AI coming in, basically almost integrated and behind the scenes? I think a lot of it will be in healthcare. I, that's the hope. That's mm -hmm. what we're going working towards, mostly to help doctors make better decisions. And in clinical trials, the same way. Can we make them uh, not only faster and cheaper, which is the business side of it, but also can we make it so that the drugs are working for the right patient. So using AI 
in a way to find, hey, we see that people in this population with this gender, with this age, they work much more, much better in this drug compared to this other drug. And we're not going to even waste time and money giving you the wrong drug. And it's again, it's a place where there's a win-win. The company wins, is not wasting a lot of money. Patient wins because they're not going through a clinical trial that's not going to give any results. So a year from now, we're sitting here having this conversation. <laughs> what will we be talking about? Um, perhaps uh, I would wish it would be regulatory and the regulators saying, yes, we agree with all of this. And <laughs> and AI regulation. And the <laughs> AI regulation uh, being, uh, it's a lot of discussions that we'll have to have and that, that will be slow. But I think uh, a year from now, it will be more applications. We have used Gen AI for some of the imaging, chest x-rays, endoscopy, and we're just going to use a lot more in a lot of different settings. Well, I look forward to that conversation awesome. in a year. Thank you. Thank you. This is Chuck Martin at the AI Summit in New York.